Therapeutic Interventions While I realize that there is a lot of information included in the textbook regarding this chapter, I have provided a brief overview of therapeutic interventions. Typically, therapeutic interventions as a class is taught over at least a semester, if not a year. I do not expect that you know every modality or how to use each modality, or even the indications, contraindications, or even precautions. For this course, it's important that you realize that there are multiple modality options available to treat different injuries. In order to understand how modalities work, we need to understand how energy is transferred. Diathermy is an example of radiation. Radiation is a transfer of energy from infrared waves without any physical contact. An ice pack on the knee is an example of conduction. Conduction is a direct transfer of energy between two objects. A cold whirlpool or warm whirlpool is an example of convection. Convection is a more rapid process than conduction and occurs when a medium, such as the air or water, moves across the body. Therapeutic ultrasound is an example of conversion. Conversion involves the change of another energy form into heat. In the case of therapeutic ultrasound, that would be ultrasonic waves into heat. Cryotherapy is the use of cold application. Different forms of cryotherapy include ice packs and cold packs, controlled compression therapy units, ice massage, and ice immersion. When cryotherapy is used, it causes an immediate vasoconstriction and decreases the vascular permeability of tissues, making it a perfect choice for treatment after an injury has occurred. Cryotherapy is utilized to decrease inflammation, decrease pain, decrease circulation, and decrease muscle spasms. Ice bags are different than cold packs. Ice bags are literally a bag of ice, and a cold pack is either a single use or multiple use bag, which has chemical or a liquid solution inside. They can be stored in the freezer or they may be at room temperature and may be shaken or cracked to activate. Individuals need to be careful when using cold packs. The way the cold is created is usually through a chemical process and any bag leaks could cause chemical burns to the skin. Also, since ice warms to the body through radiation transfer, there isn't much chance of frostbite when using an ice bag. However, cold packs can often reach temperatures much colder than ice and should never be applied directly to the skin. Controlled compression therapy units like the Game Ready combine ice and cryotherapy as well as compression. The compression can sometimes be adjusted. There are many commercially available products on the market. Ice massage is using a chunk of ice to massage the skin. Ice massage can be very effective for injuries like shin splints, but you need to be careful in bony areas as ice is not always very forgiving and can hurt the person if pushed on too hard. Ice immersion is submerging different parts of the body or even the entire body in water with ice. The more of the body that is submerged, the more concerned we need to be about hypothermia. Any patient that is participating in ice immersion needs to be watched carefully. Thermotherapy is the use of heat applications. Different forms of thermotherapy include a warm whirlpool, moist hot packs, paraffin baths, fluidotherapy, therapeutic ultrasound, and diathermy. When thermotherapy is used, it causes an immediate vasodilation and helps to remove waste products and also increases cellular metabolism. Thermotherapy is utilized to increase connective tissue extensibility and to gain range of motion, especially after someone has been immobilized for a period of time, such as having your arm in a cast after a fracture. Thermotherapy should only be utilized after someone is past the active inflammation stage of the healing process. Warm whirlpool baths are utilized to allow the patient to work on range of motion while also getting the heating effects. Many of us have enjoyed the use of a hot tub to help us relax, and warm whirlpool baths have the same effect. 
Moist heat packs are commercially available and are widely used in a lot of sports medicine, physical therapy, and athletic training clinics. Most moist heat packs are kept in a unit called a hydroculator, which keeps the water very warm. These packs are then taken out of the water and placed inside a terry cloth cover and are placed on the patient. If the terry cloth cover is wet from repeated use, then the heat pack can get very hot. It is important to have a towel on hand to place in between the person and the cover during treatment if the hot pack gets too hot. Many people with low back pain like the use of moist heat packs to help relieve their discomfort. Anyone being treated with a moist hot pack should not sit or lay on that pack because if the pack gets too hot, it can be very difficult for someone who is in pain to move quickly and place more padding under your patients so they don't end up burned. A paraffin bath uses warmed wax and essential oils to help heat tissues. It is a great therapy for hands, feet, and elbows. It is commonly used in sports. People will dip the body part and wax multiple times to create wax layers and thus trap the heat. It is important that people do not move around when dipping their hands or feet in the wax as it can create cracks in the wax allowing additional hot wax to seep in. The outer layer of the wax acts as an insulator to help trap heat. When the heat is dissipated, the wax is removed and should be thrown away. Fluidotherapy is a large unit that utilizes little pieces of corn husk to move around in the air. The unit functions similarly to a popcorn unit machine as an air popper. It circulates little objects and creates a convection heating system. This is a great therapy for hand injuries and can help people who are struggling with sensory deficit after injury. Therapeutic ultrasound does not create an image like a pregnancy ultrasound does. Rather, it utilizes sound waves to help heat the tissue. You need to be careful with ultrasound machines because if they are not moved quickly enough or if they are set wrong, they can actually injure and burn tissue. Lastly is diathermy. A diathermy unit uses heat coils to heat the body. There are some precautions that need to be considered with diathermy. Because diathermy offers such deep heat treatment, any rods, plates, screws, or any metal or active bleeding will react negatively to the treatment. Electrical therapy is the use of electricity to perform treatment for either pain or muscle re-education. There are many different types of electrical therapy using the therapeutic settings. Electrical therapy feels different depending on the settings. It can be anything from subsensory, meaning you do not feel it at all, to a buzzing or tingling sensation, or even a stimulator that causes full muscle contractions. Some types of electrical therapy are more comfortable for patients than are others. Manual therapies are the use of the hands of a clinician or the patient for treatment. There are many different forms of manual therapy utilized in the therapeutic setting and some require advanced training or specializations. Manual therapy is often utilized to decrease pain, increase blood flow, and realign the body. There are many different types of massage therapies that are utilized in the therapeutic setting. Myofascial release is finding trigger points within the tissue or areas of discomfort and then utilizing foam rollers or massage to help the tissue adhesions to relax. Joint mobilization is utilized for both pain management and to increase ranges of motion. Traction is the pulling of the tissues within a controlled environment to reduce pain. Positional release is finding areas of pain and then helping patients find positions which release the pain, applying pressure to the painful areas and then releasing. Active release is very similar to positional release, except instead of having a patient relax, you have the patient contract while the clinician applies pressure to the painful areas and then releases. Medication can be very helpful to help modulate pain for a patient. Many injuries can be very painful and medication can help mask the pain. However, pain is important. It tells us how the injury is healing. 
When starting a rehabilitation process with my patients, I will often ask them not to take their pain medication until after the rehabilitation visit. We use pain as our guide for activity. If the pain has been masked by medication, it can be difficult to tell if the tissues are responding to therapy or if we are pushing the patient too hard. To better understand the effect of medication, it is important to understand the different types of medication. Medications can be prescribed by a physician or they can be purchased in the store. Medications that can be purchased by the average person without a prescription are commonly referred to as over-the-counter or OTC medications. NSAIDs or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are common OTC medications. Examples of NSAIDs are ibuprofen and naproxen. Local anesthetics block the nerves that can produce pain. The names of these medications typically end in cane. Some examples of local anesthetics are lidocaine and benzocaine. Local anesthetics can either be injected or taken orally, which means they're taken by mouth. Acetaminophen is a drug which has an analgesic or pain relieving and antipyretic, which means it's a fever reducing property. Tylenol is an example of acetaminophen. Aspirin is used to treat pain and inflammation, but it also acts as a blood thinner. Unfortunately, aspirin has a number of adverse side effects, including tinnitus, which is ringing in the ears, hearing loss, gastric distress and ulcers, anemia, chest pain, neurological dysfunction, as well as many other complications. It's very easy to overdose on aspirin, even though it's an over-the-counter medication. Muscle relaxants are used to relieve muscle spasm, resulting from injury and inflammation. It's very important that patients do not take muscle relaxants before therapy sessions, as they become very sleepy and may not be in full control of their movements. What exactly do we need to know for this course? I'm sure you're asking yourself this very question. There are many modality options to choose from when treating injuries. If you plan to pursue further education in physical therapy, occupational therapy, chiropractics, or even athletic training, you will have at least one if not more therapeutic intervention courses built into your academic program. There are several things I want you to take away from this lecture, such as ice, which is usually used for acute injuries, but can be used at any point during the healing process. Heat or thermotherapy, which is usually used in more chronic injuries and manual stretching, which is typically used in more chronic injuries as well.